Hello, once again, welcome to ET Global Town Hall. I'm Nabil e. Khan. Our next speaker for the fireside chat is one of the most astute and sharp industrialists. He started his entrepreneurial journey at the age of 22 with family's textile business and now transformed it into a major diversified conglomerate with interest in pharma, healthcare, financial services, real estate, and glass packaging. Let me welcome Mr. Ajay Piramal, the chairman of Piramal Group to ET Global Town Hall. You have uh, recently sold 20% stake to Carlyle Group. Currently, it's a very depressing time. It would have been a very tough call for you because uh, you were getting the right uh, uh, you know, price for your stake or not. And at the same time, attracting an investment at such a difficult time is also uh, it's not easy task. So how did you, you know, fix these two issues when you were going ahead with this deal? In, in this world uh, today, actually, pharmaceuticals and everything connected with healthcare, which is medical diagnostics, all there is actually a shortage for it. And there's a premium towards that. Because I think uh, we will come to it in your next question, but I can uh, I can see that people are going to develop much more investment in pharmaceuticals. And that is what uh, we thought of when we, uh, when we decided that let's attract some additional capital because one of the levers for growth will be the requirement of capital. And if you can get adequate capital in this space, I see the opportunities are large. Similarly, that's what even Carlyle thought. They like the management. They like the uh, track record so far. Uh, they like the business that we are in, and hence they invested. So it was not at in any way at a discount, whatever the valuation we had in our minds prior to COVID and post-COVID, I think uh, was uh, the same. I'm actually very excited because there are so many opportunities to grow in this space, both organically and through acquisitions. So can you give us a sense how pharmaceuticals become so important? Because you are in this industry, you are one of the biggest force in this industry. So how do you see India can become a formidable force on global turf? So in some ways, India is also quite a big force in pharmaceuticals already. We are good in terms of the finished dosage formulations. We have 40% of the world's market is being uh, uh, served by Indian companies which are making globally uh, global products. In vaccines as well, we are very uh, big. Uh, and I think probably half of the vaccines in the world are produced in India. In addition, there are many intermediates, there are many other uh, products in pharmaceuticals which are made by India. These are global quality products. Today, though we have an Indian company, I can say that uh, our manufacturing is globally spread out. We have manufacturing facilities in the US, we have facilities in uh, Canada, yeah. in the UK and in India. And actually 90% plus of our products are being given to global leading companies. So in that sense, India is already a key player in this uh, global supply chain. But there's scope for much more to do because we must re recognize now that pharmaceuticals and everything connected with health has now become like a strategic asset. Just like you invest in defense and each a country needs their own defense. Similarly, you will find that in pharmaceuticals and healthcare as well. We have a still strong dependence on import when it comes to raw materials. How do you see this roadblock uh, being demolished in the next few years. And so we one of the reasons why we had this uh, dependence on imports, especially in APIs, is because people felt that the value that we were getting in India for APIs was not uh, uh, remunerative enough. And people moved the investment from APIs into finished dosage and to other areas. I think it's just now moving back the focus onto what is our locally made APIs. I think we have the necessary know-how, which is the most important. We have the chemists, we have the other technical people here. We can move it back to India. We will need some time to do that. And thus we'll have to see that how certain imports, which are 
not essential, there is a gradually fading out of that so that the Indian industry gets time to develop itself and come back. This sector pays the highest royalty because we do not have enough R&D, though some companies are now taking up that R&D. What has been the reason for not opting for so much of R&D in India? So frankly, if you look at where the royalties are paid, these are, for, uh, these are paid by the multinationals who are operating out of India. And these are paid on the finished formulations. It's not because R&D is not there. These products can be made in India. Most of them can be made in India. Many of them have just got branded here. And that's why they are paying. These were original products which were developed by these companies. But once the patent has expired, India can manufacture them and Indian companies can. But what's important, I think, in R&D in India is that we have to get a, we have to get an environment where true R&D, basic R&D is also encouraged. That will take time, that takes money, but if you can get that, then we will be able to be in a stronger position. India is a market where cost matters a lot. In everything, we look for affordability, be it automotive manufacturing or uh, consumer electronics. Same is in affordable medicines that needs to be available for the country. But we have seen there's no major breakthrough in that area. How do you see the future transform? Actually, if you look at the cost of medicines in India, they are the lowest in the world in terms of, and they are of global standards of quality. That's why India can make 40% of the global finished dosage formulations. Large population remains, you know, out of this, uh, uh, you know, they are not able to access to proper medicines or, uh, you know, medical. So large population in India is, uh, is, because of the shortage, I would say, of the infrastructure for healthcare. Today, we are spending less than 2% of our GDP on healthcare. I think we have to, and I, I'm sure that the government will do that, is to spend much more of their GDP. In the US is the extreme where they spend almost 18% of a much larger economy on healthcare. But even in other countries, 8 9% of GDP is the norm in healthcare spending. So unless and until we do that, you will not have access to, uh, it'll be difficult for people to get access to high quality healthcare at a lower cost. Do you see India becoming as an alternative to China anytime soon or? So already even before this COVID crisis took place, there were many companies which were looking at to diversify their uh, supply chain out of China. Over-dependence on any one country is to the detriment of all. And that was being happening before. This uh, pandemic has only increased uh, the thrust towards moving away from one single country to more than one country. And I think India, in many, many areas, has the advantage to fulfill this gap. One last question that probably all viewers would like to no. When do you expect that COVID-19 vaccine can be made available in India? How far are we? Because you are in this industry. You... I, I, have, I think there are many more experts on vaccine and I see so many different opinions. So I don't want to uh, forecast this because one area which I see in COVID is that everyday experts are changing their opinion. It is so, it's such a, let's say, versatile and moving target that I will leave it to only time to tell us. Thank you so much, Mr. Piramal, for joining ET Global Town Hall. Stay tuned. Thank you.